finally, let's use the black talon for this. The weapon of choice. Alright, finally, two weeks, two weeks, UPS. Good God, what is going on? Oh my God, that hellish northeast part of the country. Alright, there you go. The only thing I can wear in comfort. Let's see. Aha! Ah. Been watching a lot of videos lately about boots and stuff. And Skechers are so popular, it's unbelievable. And to find a slip-on is extremely hard. So, I got these in 13s because this was like the last pair left on earth of these slip-on boots. I don't really call them boots, I call them uh, slip-on sneakers really light and if you've never wore Skechers before good God let me tell you the most thing, most comfortable shoes I've ever worn in my life in comparison that's what I have been wearing especially on the boat in between Wearing rubber boots when it's pouring rain. Oh, look at these things. Bet you guess, can't guess what uh, all that stain is. <laughs> so, these are years and years worth of wearing. And they're, they're still good. Just got done respraying them with, uh, let me show you. With this type stuff, not necessarily auto fabric, carpet, and water shield, but this type of stuff. This is what I put on my outboard covers, is this stuff. But I just got done respraying them, but every six months I, re I spray them. So, I'm really going to be stepping out here, aren't I, folks? A little bit different. Of course, it is guaranteed that if you find something that you like and never ever want to change, you want no change in your life. These companies that make shoes, rods, reels, shorts, t-shirts, you don't, no matter what, it doesn't matter what it is, will stop making them right when you need a new pair. So I've got two of these. I keep one on the boat this time of year because sometimes the boat ramp is so flooded at these absolute monster wicked full moon tides that I have to wear boots just to get in the boat, put the boat, so then I switch over. But these are things, these are like walking on cloud nine. So, let's see if these are going to be like walking on cloud nine. A little bit different. Same theory, though. Same height. Same everything. I'll give you a little hint. This is just my observation. And that's not what this video is even about. On a boat, cleaning fish, blah, 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 blah. I hate laces. 
I don't mind laces, but I don't particularly care for laces. Okay? Because it makes all kinds of nooks and crannies for crap to get in. Like when you're cleaning fish and you get a big old streak of blood or something. That all gets in on the laces and all. At least these... It sits right on top. If you were a little more proactive, you could just clean them when you get home, which I don't. So these are going to be for stepping out on all those hot dates that I have. All them hot chicks. Me and the Ann Coulters of the world. That's what these are going to be for. Until these wear out, and then I'll press these into nasty service. So. All right, let's see if they fit good. They match the color of the deck of my boat. out here besides playing around with a new pair of Skechers. Yes, the shoes of choice. What I'm actually doing out here is I'm making sure the Makita is all charged up because what is tomorrow? Tomorrow is the El Cheapo Sheepshead Tournament. Mmm. I've got to make sure that the batteries on this Makita are 100% and my blades. Why? Because I'm going to be doing fish cleaning duty. Again, I'm sure, unless they change something. So, here's a fillets all blade. It's nothing more than a scalloped Dexter Russell with the universal end. And if you've never seen this on my channel, then guess what? You're a newbie. You take this end, flip this around. Drop her in there to have the most wicked electric fillet knife known to man. Oh, got to put a battery in it. This is what would eat a Bubba, even electric Bubba, would eat it alive and spit it out. Because this has a real motor, a real lithium-ion battery, and it can do, I don't know. I can take the sides off a 20 sheep's head with this. All right. So, what I got to do is I'm going to charge these and prep for tomorrow. I doubt I'll do another video because usually um, they don't get many views and... I've even gotten strikes from YouTube for showing fish cleaning. Yes. You know, the people in Silicon Valley, they think they're sh they're, uh, all their fish come out of the ocean on styrofoam containers laid out with saran wrap on top of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm checking these blades, and they're pretty wicked. I think I did put them on the major strop machine they're pretty wicked and this is the freshwater version of the flays all 
not necessarily just for fresh water but it's for smaller fish it's got a super bendable blade but I might run one side of these across the strop machine thanks to Orwalk. so let me do that and show you well this is the uh, Dr. Gary Wen uh, sharpener over on this side you've got the stone it runs through a water bath let me turn it on okay. runs through a water bath you can see down in there that's for using the stone then over on this side we've got the leather strop with Dr. Gary's green diamond paste and that's I'm not needing to put a new edge on it so I don't need to use this I don't need to put a new edge on those knives but I am going to run them on the strop of course when you're running a serrated blade on a strop you're only doing one side because it's chisel ground it's ground on this side flat on this side so I'm just going to strop these a little bit make sure they're good and sharp for tomorrow cleaning all those sheep's head this just polishes the edge just polishes the edge and what I put on here is what Dr. Gary or a walk is his YouTube name and he's not really a doctor he's just a doctor of destruction see here's the green diamond infused paste put some on my finger get it on the, the leather here A little goes a long way. And that's that. I don't know where he always finds these little containers to put everything in, but he does. So, get another blade out. See, I mean, your finger can really hang up on these. That's that's the serrations being very, very sharp. Right. So just checking it here. Just run that blade on there a little bit. You just want to run the edge on here. run the edge all I'm trying to do is just polish up the serrations I'm not trying to sharpen it but this does really get it good and burr burr free and after this I'm going to charge up the batteries stick with me here because I'm going to show you a little bit of last year's footage because now with the China plague I do not know what how they're gonna run the tournament as far as the fish cleaning and all that I don't know I heard something about they're not gonna have Hell's Kitchen this year or something Hell's Kitchen is where they sharpen or not sharpen where they cook all the sheep's head that we clean they cook them up and feed them to the tournament participants that's feeling pretty good so hell's kitchen is pure hell as they call it and it's a it's a uh, tent 
with giant fish cookers going at full blast, making French fries, hush puppies, and fried sheep's head nuggetry. Not big giant pieces, but just nuggets, I guess you can say. And uh, this is the world's largest sheep's head tournament in the globe. There is no sheep's head tournament larger than this one. I believe it's had over 400 boats in it before. And now it's rivaling and taking over here in Jacksonville, Florida. Taking over the largest king mackerel tournament that they have in the summer with more participants. And guess what? Tomorrow it is supposed to blow my last look. 15 to 20 knots. It's blowing today, so it's probably going to blow tomorrow. Hopefully, Preston is in the service tomorrow. And then later on, I hope to be cleaning Sheep's Head. And next should be Black Drum. I should be doing Black Drum here shortly. All right, that feels pretty good. So then, there's one other thing I do. Uh, just again to hone them up a little bit, I take my finest Spyderco Triangle Sharp Maker Stones on the 40 degree angle. I only need one, really. The one with the red is the ultra, ultra fine stone. And of course, I'm only going to go on the one edge that isn't got the serrations. And I'm just going to run it down just to make sure. These do have an edge. I've already done them on the when whetstone and then maybe over here where the serrations are do one little and these things are wicked sharp.